Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the Williams Warm-Up. This week we're heading to Austria and we're taking you behind the scenes on all the action at Williams Racing. This week is Nicholas Latifi's 50th Grand Prix, so we caught up with him ahead of the race to reflect on the ride so far. Well, Nicky, firstly, congratulations. This week is your 50th Formula One Grand Prix. Just take us through how you feel about that. Yeah, it feels, uh, it feels like a bit longer than that, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, a, it's a, a little milestone for sure, which has been nice. It's, you know, halfway through my third year right now, and it's obviously been a lot a lot of uh, good experiences, uh, a lot of character building experiences, but uh, overall, you know, I think I'm you know, fairly pleased with, with the way everything's gone. Uh, this year, it's actually been a bit more uh, of a struggle at the beginning, but you know, I've had some great experiences with this team and I'm just looking forward to keep, keep growing and hopefully get back more uh, competitive uh, points fighting position ways. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's take it back to Australia 2020, where you thought you were going to make your F1 debut. You know, you went all that way out there to Australia to prepare, and then and then COVID hit. Just how difficult was it to prepare in that situation, and then have all those changes? Yeah, it was a very unique situation for sure. I mean, <laughs> firstly, it was a bit of a pain to have to end up going all the way out there and to then come back and not have done any racing or any driving. I mean, that was the same for everybody, but. Sure, naturally, as you could expect, the fact that it wasn't going to be my debut, uh, there was a lot of anticipation, a lot of you know uh, excitement, kind of building up to that moment. You know, a lot of hard work in the winter, not just for for me, but for the, the team and, and my personal team as well. To be honest, it was uh, I think obviously an unprecedented time for everyone in the world. And yeah, it was it was not um, easy having to wait on those those few months, but I just tried to use the time the best the best I could, uh, tried to do as much training as, as I could and stay prepared and uh, yeah, ultimately we got going uh, a few months later in Austria, albeit under very, very different circumstances. Yeah, you touched on it there a little bit about Austria 2020. Just take us back through that weekend and your emotions as you were building up to make your F1 debut. Yeah, it was it was obviously a special weekend because you know, it was my first official Formula One race. Uh, you know, I, it, it did feel different to what I was expecting for a Formula One weekend, and I mean, not necessarily in a in a bad or or a good way, but obviously arriving <laughs> when COVID was in full effect, it was kind of like a ghost town in the paddock. Uh, which there was positives to that because I was able to just focus on on my job uh, and kind of let's say maybe ease into the rookie experience a bit easier. Uh, but yeah, there's also you were kind of missing that atmosphere and that buzz, which we obviously then got at, at so many races towards the end of last year and obviously this year now uh, with kind of fans coming back in full capacity. Uh, but yeah, it's been uh, uh, a very unique transition I've had from my rookie year in F1 to now. Yeah, absolutely. And you just fast forward a little bit to Hungary 2021 where you scored your first points. Just take us through what was going through your head when you sort of avoided all that turn one chaos and uh, made yourself, you know, into a, put yourself in a point scoring position. Uh, yeah, it was, it was obviously, I mean, as, as soon as I cleared through the through the, the crash and I saw it was, you know, I think it was P6 at the, at the time there, uh, I, I kind of immediately said, okay, well, this is, you know, this is going to be an opportunity here. I mean, obviously, I, I knew I was, we were the ninth slowest car that, that weekend. We qualified 17 and 18 as a team. Uh, so I knew it was going to be very difficult, but thankfully it was a track that's very difficult to overtake on. Uh, and then obviously with the restart and the kind of people diving into the pits for slicks and whatnot, so we emerged P3 and uh, running in P3 for the whole first into the race, which was very, very cool. Uh, kind of felt just natural to me. And the only thing that was unnatural was that I had cars that were way, way quicker behind uh, by nature of, you know, just them having much more downforce. Uh, so that was that was obviously very cool, but uh, you know to have got the points finished the first of, of my F1 career, and to have you know had the double points finished with the team, it's obviously very special. I mean, those ten points proved crucial in the championship position that we got eighth in our fight with Alfa Romeo last year. So it was a uh, yeah overall a very special weekend for sure. You know, moving forward to this year, you finally got to race in front of your home crowd. How was that given that you know the last couple of years you weren't able to due to the, the race being postponed in the end? What was it like to finally get out there and experience that this year? Yeah, I mean, I think that was actually a very uh, cool experience a few weeks ago getting to get my home Grand Prix. I mean, that was all kind of very surreal, you know, getting that home Grand Prix for once, uh, especially after the very long wait, uh, first two years not having it because of COVID. And, you know, there was a lot of, obviously, anticipation for me having that event. And, you know, I, I had a lot of family and friends who've never even come to an F1 race so far this year of, of mine. Uh, so that was a lot of them, the first race, them seeing me race in person. Uh, and then to have it a Formula One race as well was quite special. It was my first car race in general in Canada, full stop, because I, as soon as I went to cars, I, I moved straight over to Europe. Uh, so there was a lot of very, you know, special feelings, and it was nice to kind of share that with you know a lot of my family who have been, you know, 
not just my immediate family, but you know, all, all my extended family still lives in Montreal, uh, and you know, who've been so supportive since you know the start and my kind of journey throughout. So it was uh, it was very very cool, and I, yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, take it back to last weekend. You know, Silverstone, first Q3 appearance, changeable conditions. You must have been delighted with that. Yeah, I mean that was obviously a very nice uh, nice boost both on personal side for my confidence and I think as well for the team for the home Grand Prix to have a Q3 appearance I mean I think that was more than we could have uh, hoped for I mean already I think when I got through the Q2 that was already kind of like a box ticked for me it was obviously my first Q2 this year and uh, so to firstly get through the Q2 and then Q3 was was amazing and you know you always hope with those changeable conditions there is an opportunity to make a difference uh, but just because it rains it doesn't mean that our car is faster in the rain than it is in the dry you know a quick car in the dry is a quick car in the wet and a slow car uh, in the dry is a slow car in the wet. That's I think is something that's still quite clear, but it does create more opportunity to make a little bit of a difference. Uh, and so yeah, we did that, and yeah, I was uh, yeah very very happy to have my best qualifying in Formula One. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this weekend you're right back where you started at your first Grand Prix in Austria for your 50th. Uh, just take us through how you're feeling ahead of this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. So it's. It's uh, you know naturally carrying some nice positive momentum because you know, even the race in Silverstone I felt was you know quite a, a positive one and a, fun, and a fun one really despite the fact we didn't come away with any points you know it was nice to be in that battle and running in points positions for for so long of the race and, and fighting with midfield cars but cars that were still much much quicker than me in that race so it kind of got that competitive uh, feeling back which I've been missing so far this year. But yeah, going into Austria, sprint race, I mean, I was always a fan of those weekends, uh, kind of changing up the format slightly. So yeah, looking forward to see how that, that plays out. I think we're still going to be doing a lot of learning on uh, from a team, especially on Alex's side of the garage with the new upgrade package. So um, as I was in Silverstone, I'm going to be watching a keen eye on, on that side as well to see, you know, I know I'm going to be getting that in a few races time. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to you know, focus on our, on our work and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we could manage some things a little bit better than, than our, our opponents and you know sprint race weekends they are very difficult to get right you know you have to get everything done basically in fp1 that sets your whole weekend that's time for the team to prepare for the driver so uh, yeah hopefully it's a good one yeah thank you guys firstly good luck we'll be uh, we'll be looking forward to it and congratulations on 50 grand Prix. thank you next up williams academy driver logan Sargent became the first american driver to win a formula 2 race with his victory at the british grand prix last weekend we caught up with logan to get his initial reaction So we're joined by Logan Sargent, our Williams Racing Academy driver. We're here at Silverstone, it's been a big morning. Uh, Logan, tell us what's been going on. What a day, what a weekend. Um, no, yeah, it was, a, it was a long, hard race, but uh, I'm glad that my first Formula 2 win came today. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking to try and carry that through the next rounds. And you brought the trophy over as well, very kind of you. Uh, where does silverware like this, where do you put it? So the team actually keeps the silverware. I'm really? allowed to take it, but uh, we can get some replicas made or something like that. Nice. And how's the season been so far? You're the top rookie at the moment, third in the championship, I believe, after this morning. Um, that feels like a, a pretty great start to life in Formula 2. Yeah, I feel like we've definitely had some missed opportunities this year, but I feel like we're ironing out you know, the small mistakes and we're starting to get you know, much more consistent and more comfortable. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the next seven. And you did a recent training camp with the other racing, Williams Racing Driver Academy drivers, so Zach O'Sullivan, Ollie Gray, uh, Jamie Chadwick. How was that? And, and do you feel that working with the team is helping you progress as a driver? No, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the training camp, it's just sort of, you know, really good for team bonding. Um, just getting to know the other drivers more. Um, I think as well when, Obviously, I'm in F2 now. They can sort of, you know, try to get to that get to that point in their training. Um, and then, yeah, obviously working with Williams on the simulator. Uh, we've had a few sessions in the past month, and that's all going really well as well. Good stuff. So we're obviously looking ahead to to Austria now. It's coming up, and uh, what's your kind of memories of, of racing there? Do you have, uh, you know, a, a particular fondness for it as a track? Yeah, I think generally. It wasn't a track that I was immediately quick at, but I feel like I've worked at it and I'm to the point where, you know, I believe I can be at the front. Um, especially following this weekend, I, I know I'm capable of, of putting it at the front and the, the Carlin's done a great job giving me a good car all year. Um, 
So yeah, just gonna try and take advantage of that and uh, see what we can do. It's quite a unique track, quite fast in places, not too many corners. Do you favor that as a driver over a kind of tight, twisty circuit? Yeah, I think a bit of both is is ideal. Honestly, Silverstone's probably the best place. Uh, well, as you showed this morning, Best right? place to drive, yeah. yeah. But um, no, I, I like fast flowing sections. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite confident we'll have a good weekend. And finally, sitting third, top rookie. Uh, have you had to modify your goal slightly for the rest of the season, or is this exactly where you, you hoped or expected to be? This is definitely where I hoped to be. Um, I didn't really set any ex expectations. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. My, my, my goal and plan was just to sort of keep improving round after round and cut out the mistakes, which I feel like we're starting to do. And um, I feel like the, it's progressing nicely and we just need to keep, keep on that path. Well, good stuff. And uh, yeah, good luck in Austria. We hope it goes well and we're looking to seeing a couple more of these uh, joining us in the motorhome. That's the plan. Thank you. Good stuff. And finally, we caught up with Heritage team manager Tom Morton at the Goodwood Festival of Speed to talk all things Nigel Mansell and the FW14B. Yeah, so I'm Tom Morton. I'm uh, Heritage team manager for Williams. I probably have uh, one of the best jobs in the world. I get to look after the entire collection of our historic racing cars. Um, that's every car that we, we own, apart from our, our main race cars. So as well as building the amazing cars that you see behind us, this is the exciting part, you know, doing the, doing the rebuilds, getting them to events like this, showing, showcasing them in front of, in front of fans. Um, there's also a lot of items to deal with with the, the, the newer side of cars. Uh, make sure that we've got the relevant spares packages for those in case we, we need to do anything with those over the coming years as well. So this weekend we're running FW14B um, here at Goodwood, Festival of Speed. It's such an iconic place to run a car because the fans can just get so close to the action, which is which is really good. This particular car is so so special for Williams. You know, we're a, we're a, a British team. In, in 1992, we had a, a British driver uh, who had an awful lot of success in this car um, across the, the racing season. And uh, there was a real sort of Mansell mania hit the UK uh, and Formula One was, uh, was so well followed as it is today as well. So, uh, you know, whenever, whenever anyone thinks of Williams and uh, they always think of FW14B, the two are, are, are really linked. Obviously, we've got a fantastic collection of, of all the cars and uh, won many world championships, but the 14B really is a a sort of our our pinnacle so yeah it's fantastic to be able to showcase it and run it here so today for the for the hill climb we are uh running the car pretty much exactly as it would have been in period there are a couple of main changes because it's quite a unique environment at goodwood specifically the curvature of the of the track the hill climb it's very ca it's very cambered so uh it's not flat like a racetrack would be uh, so we've uh, adjusted the ride height to its to its maximum height uh mechanically and also with the active as well. So there's a switch in the car which allows us to adjust the, the ride height on the active suspension. So we're as high up as we can be. And from listening to driver feedback when we've had this car here before, it's actually not a particularly pleasant car to drive up the hill because of, because of the environment. For me personally, this is a very special occasion and um, I feel very honored to be here to do what I do um, any day of the week. But to be here at this event running Nigel Mansell, something I never thought that I'd get to do. You know, we've, we've still got people, employees at Williams who uh, worked with him in period. And I've heard stories and, uh, and their experience of it, but to be lucky enough to work with him, run him in the car, uh, and ultimately have, have that responsibility is a, is a great privilege. One thing I would say is that the build of, of this car, uh, we've rebuilt it over the last four or five months and we've really put in long hours to, to get this car here and there's no way that we could have done that without the longevity and the experience that uh, the guys behind me have got uh, so it's uh, it's it's fantastic it's a privilege to work with them as well it really is and it's it's a learning experience every day and that is all for this week's episode of the williams warm-up we'll be back next time when we're in france but until then make sure you download the app sign up for your driver card and we'll see you next time